pleasant good afternoon to one and all. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Welcome, welcome to this episode, the Monday's episode of Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Incompetence. Welcome, welcome. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Hope you're looking forward to a productive week. Now, uh, share the live. I, I have to keep reminding you uh, to share the live. Share the live and let people know that we're on. At the commencement, let me tell you this. I um, We have some issues in the streaming. Um, those persons who are accustomed to streaming or to viewing the page on Camps TV and Facebook, it would appear as though, um, Cam, I know for certain that Camps TV Facebook page has been hijacked, um, is locked out from the page, and um, the Facebook doesn't seem to be working this morning. So all the persons who are on now are those who are on on um, YouTube. Not a single person is on here, as far as I can see, on YouTube. But the wickedness, the evil and wicked people are wrong. And that is why I was encouraging all along to make sure that you subscribe to the Facebook page by the same name that's speaking out, exposing corruption and incompetence. Uh, you like that page and you go um, to Facebook or to YouTube, rather, and you subscribe. The first um, Facebook person just came on. Just people are now coming on on, on, on Facebook. I, again, I encourage you to go, not on comms. Comms is not on. Those of you, tell, tell the people who you have been communicating with. They have hijacked comms um, TV. We used to cross stream, as they say, on comms. And um, that is no longer available until that is rectified. I now see some people are coming on on Facebook, so apparently they are using, obviously, they're using the Speaking Out page. So the Speaking Out page on Facebook is there. Like that page so that you can get notification when the um, program goes live or when the program is scheduled. Also, um, we go to YouTube and you subscribe to the YouTube channel by the same name, Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and uh, Incompetence. So, yeah, so I can see from the comments, as I said, only a while ago, a very, very short while ago, a few comments start to come from Facebook, which suggests to me that they are doing so on the speaking out page. And um, that one comes. But the schoolyard was full. Can we schedule? We were trying to resolve this issue since last night. And we went ahead and we scheduled the program just after 10 o'clock last night. And um, people came on almost immediately. So in terms of, it did not affect the number of students who are in the schoolyard waiting for classes to come in. As a matter of fact, I, I suspect that when we look at it, the numbers that were in class in the schoolyard last night and this morning early are record numbers, record numbers, because I don't think um, I've ever seen that many um, students in the classroom or in the schoolyard on a Monday that early. And because it was there very, very early, um, we have some issues with the, with YouTube. Carry you well on the page. They're only showing us those who came on from 2:44 this morning. But I have a note of persons who came on even long before that. And when I do the roll call, I will let you know because I made note of the persons who came on as early as 10:36 last night and were in the schoolyard uh, waiting. So yes, share the live. Let them know that we're here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Let's celebrate being in the land of the living because we have quite a few, well, not quite a few, I shouldn't say quite a few. We have a few um, announcements to make of persons who have passed um, over the couple of days since we were last on. And share the life so that you're not depriving persons from the uh, information. Share the life. And as I've said, if you are in contact with persons who would normally um, tune in and you don't see them on the live, those who join us on Camps TV, Facebook page. It is because that page has been hijacked. I understand that the administrators have been locked out and they can't get into the page to schedule the program on that stage. And you know, as I'm on that subject, let me remind you that when you're on Facebook, they give you the option, they, they give you the option for a two, uh, what I call it, let me, I made a note of it here, of a two-factor authentication. Now, what this means is that every time you attempt to log into your page, you are, they will Facebook will send you a code to your phone number, which you will provide to them. And unless that number, that code is put in, 
you will not be allowed to access the page. So it is important for those of you who are on Facebook to um, have, make sure you have the two-factor authentication. I say again that once you log out of your page and you try to log in to the page, you are not going to be able to do so unless the code, you receive a code from uh, Facebook and you enter that code into the field that is provided, then and only then. In that way, it makes it difficult for persons to hijack um, your page. So if you have not done that, perhaps you should do that. I think it would appear that Cam's TV did not do that. So the uh, miscreants were able to lock him out of his own page or lock out Cam's from the own Cam's page and he cannot get in to the page now. So I don't know how that is going to be resolved. Maybe you have to just create a new page. Make sure, however, that there is two-factor authentication. Let me do the roll call and then we're going to go into the announcements right away. As I said, when we scheduled at 10 to the 6 last night, the first person in, uh, I don't think I made a note because the, the comments here now are telling me that the first person came in at 244. That is not so. The first person came in was Francis Keat, um, and he came in at 10 to the 6 p.m. last night. Then we had Kenneth DeFlorman at 10 40. Uh, Francis was 10 36. Kenneth came in at 10 46. Wayne Kesnu came in at 10 58. Rastaman came in at 11 17. Cecile came in at Ogle, came in at 11 18. Debbie Collins came in at 11 20. Barlett came in at 11 21. And Isabella came in at 11 59. That is last night. This morning, the first person was Daniel Corbin. He came in at 12 01. Vibert came in at 12.07. Um, 12 George Collar, my countryman, he came in at 12.16. Raul George came in at uh, 12.41. Ronald Jonas came in at 1.10. And then we had Ruth Mars came in at 1.15. Enric came in at 2.18. YouTube user came in at 2.44, and that is what they have. And the others now are listed here, so I can scroll down, and you can see that. Family Music, uh, as I said, YouTuber, came in at 2.44. Family Music, next, Fergus. Then we had Ian, all the way from Queens. Um, then, who next? Carlisle came in. He said he missed a few live. Well, you know, once you miss the live, you can always go to YouTube or the Facebook page and to get to see what is going on. So this, this, um, this Carlisle came, came in late. Maureen um, came in at 6.04. The one and only Rohan, he came in uh, after. Gail came in. Um, she says, thank to Jovi for life. We all are thankful for life. Cranston came next. Carlton, my squad mate, and he's, thank, he's um, saying here that he's congratulating those who um, of our squad mates who recently celebrated their 50th anniversary on the 15th. And um, we, we have commenced a WhatsApp group and it has become very, very popular. People who have not seen each other in decades, at least we are able to communicate and share some of the stories. Felicia came next. Tessa from, um, Tessa is where? Florida. Winston from the UK came in. Then immediately after Winston, the next person from the UK, Wayne came in. And then Joan was in next, followed by Denise, followed by Cecile, followed by Como from New Jersey. John was here next. Sean, Sean don't miss a class. Very good student, like, some, like so many others. Pamela is here. Jean came in and she said, um, she's, not skipping, she's, she's skipping in the schoolyard. She's skipping. Derek came in next. Brian. And then we had the original black man. And he said that he was on vacation. And after two weeks, he missed the live. But he watched the show on YouTube. Good student. He missed the live because he was on vacation. But he watched the show on YouTube. Then we had Courtney. Earl. Ivan Lina came in. Uh, Bart was in next. Clarence. Not a regular. Emerson. Um, I must say he's in Manhattan, Midtown, Manhattan, USA. He's watching. Debbie is in uh, watching. Ulrich, my squad mate. And look what Ulrich is saying here. Ulrich is saying that, um, oh, he said yes. He opened. I got the text, um, Ulrich. 
And I don't think it's any secret, so I can share it. Ulrich is asking for us to put on a third day. He was suggesting that maybe we need to do um, Fridays as well. Ulrich, we, we, it's an active consideration, and we let you know. Remember, we have other things to do too, you know. We're going to try to be here as often as we can to bring you the information. Kay was here next. Then we had Vernon. Leon here. Old TSU man. BX, the one and only BX. Uh, he's from, he says he's from New York, New Jersey. Uh, Patricia came in. Philadelphia in the house. Ulrich is here. Carl, my squad from Arizona, is in the house. Carville, um, another squad mate of mine, is here. Pilula is in class. Uh, Easy, Easy is here. Said to have a good day. Everett from Texas is here. Karen McGarvey is in the house. Uh, Patricia is here. She's from New Jersey, I know. Anthony from the East Bank. Peter's all in the East Bank. Clifton, all the way from Paris, is in the house. Monica is um, here as well. Kerry, Lucius, and Kerry says she's from Baltimore. <laughs> Must give recognition to Baltimore. Lucius is here. Sandra, Evelyn, or Evelyn. Then we have um, Doreen. Last week, I think I made a mistake. I said Doreen is from New Jersey. She messaged me to tell, tell me that, no, I'm making, I said, I think she's from New Jersey. Doreen is from Canada. Doreen is from Canada. And I did apologize um, to her. I do make mistakes. And when I make mistakes, or when we make mistakes on this program, we admit to our mistakes. We're not going to tell you that you did not see correctly or you did not hear what we were saying. We're not going to do that. And then we have Osman. Ah, Osman, welcome, welcome, welcome. I can't recall seeing you on the live before, but welcome. Vibart from Isba. Barbara is here. Rhonda. Not, not the Rhonda. Not, um, Rhonda Chance is here. I think the other Rhonda usually come on and calms TV. And so therefore, they're going to miss the live unless they catch up with what's going on and they come on to the uh, other stream. David is in the house. Anthony. Malcolm is here from Queens. And we have Joseph. Um, and Joseph wants us to discuss the dismissal again. I'm not sure if we can do that today, but certainly we are going to address dismissal. I suspect he's referring to this ranks from the force when they can be dismissed. Um, Lester is in the house. And who else? We have, um, yeah, Lester said, the good was always, truth continues to triumph over a tragedy. He said, truth. That is true. The good has always triumph over evil. Terence from Canada is in the house. Toronto. Orin from the UK. Then we have Marvin. Gordon from Canada. Old police. 6659 was his regulation number. Chilo is in the house. Then we have Gavin. Jakey is here. Danny, old detective Danny. Danny, I hope you're getting better because I know a few weeks ago you said that you weren't doing too well. Then we have Lynette from the UK is in the house. Samora, I can't recall seeing Samora uh, before. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Orville is here. Queenie came in. I know Queenie would normally watch. She says so she's in New York. Jaco from Georgia is in the house. Magnell, uh, Carol, and uh, Umu. Karen, and then we have Raheem is here. Louis is in the house. Um, Tessa is here as well. Um, Tessa, and that's the next Tessa. Uh, Seatred is in the house. Then we have Winston from California. Then we have Don from uh, Toronto, Canada. And that's the last of the YouTubers. And then the first Facebooker, as I said, asked to be on the Speaking Out page, was Richard. Then we had John. Welcome, John. John said perhaps Pegasus is at work. And he's not talking about the hotel Pegasus. He's talking about the spy software uh, Pegasus. Yeah, I saw a clip with someone speaking about it um, the other day. You know, I bought a book. There's a book um, about the old background and how Pegasus, this spy software, operate. A very frightening prospect when it's in the hands of people who are autocratic. Ingrid is here. Abdun from Esikimo Coast. Welcome, Abdun is here. And um, who else we have? And then Brennan, 
um, is in the house. Audrey came in as well. Now let me let me um, and that's the end of the roll call for now. Um, let me say this: uh, somebody apologizing to be late. Now I want to start by um, wishing um, all Americans today is President's Day in America. Today is President's Day. Happy President's Day to all our American um, students. Happy President's Day. Today is that. And then we have, um, as I've said, the sad notes, uh, the, the passing of a few people, the tragic passing force of a police lance corporal. I think he said Devaraj Dandru of Lagrange Police Station. Can't the um, information received. He died in a road accident, a motor vehicle accident on the Blankingborg Public Road some few days ago. The information is that this truck, I think, I can't remember the exact name, I think it might have been Puran, one of those garbage disposal, was traveling uh, west along the public road, and they claimed that the police, Lance Corporal, was proceeding in the same direction at a fast rate of speed. And the truck attempted to turn into some street or road, and because of the speed that the police was riding on, he collided with the truck. Well, when I read, when I read it, I, I, a few things sprung, uh, sprung to my mind. Because, yeah, he was, even if he was driving or ride speed, the fact that the truck was changing lane, turning to go into some street according to what they say, right? It means that the driver of the truck had the responsibility to signal his intention to turn and to make sure that the, it was safe for him to do so. So the fact that this corporal, as a claim, was driving fast, that in itself didn't mean that he was dangerous. If the truck failed to signal properly, if the driver of the truck failed to make the turn when it was safe to do so, obviously it was not safe, then the driver may be comp uh, culpable um, as well. So um, I hope the police investigate this matter, not properly, not because it's a policeman who lost his life, but just to tell you that the fact that you're going to claim that the man was riding fast doesn't necessarily mean that he is only responsible for this accident and the loss of his life. I remember a similar case some time ago when I was um, the traffic chief at, at Beto Hope. A truck proceeding east along the Beto Hope public road. A policeman in uniform, traffic rank in uniform, on a police bicycle, was riding behind and attempted to overtake the truck. The truck driver turned across the um, road and the driver, the rider of the motorcycle, the policeman, struck, lost control, ended up in the trench. He did not die. And um, people started to make um, claims that because the policeman was overtaken at the time, the policeman was wrong. So I had to let them know overtaking is a legal maneuver. There's nothing wrong with you overtaking, whether you're riding a motorcycle, whether you're driving a car or truck, whatever vehicle. You can't overtake under certain circumstances. And I made the point then, that if the truck driver was changing course, he was traveling um, east and he wanted to go into some street he's turning, he has a responsibility for us to signal. And not only signal because the, 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 the indicator might be out of order. He has to make, he has to look to see in this um, rear view mirror. And they will teach you as well because there's this blind spot to make sure that nothing is in your, in your blind spot before you turn across the road. So I'm saying this to these traffic investigators. Don't jump to the conclusion because, as the, as the release said, oh, the policeman was driving fast, giving, creating the impression that because he was driving fast, he was at fault for the accident. Not necessarily so. The driver who was in front has a responsibility to make sure that it is safe for him to turn. He's changing his course of travel. And he has a major responsibility to make sure that it is safe. I hope so. I hope you understand that. And then we have the death of former uh, police rank, Lee Kak. The older police will remember 10222 Lee Kak. Old TSU man, and then he went to some other place. We used to call him Zhao. Zhao, Lee Kak Zhao. The information is that he passed recently. I remember Lee Kak very, very well. Lee Kak was a man from the casino. So I remember him very, very well. And then um, well, he passed recently, and word came to hand too that um, a former rank of the TSU and the Presidential Guard, 8842 Blair, can't remember what is his first name, but 8842 Blair, those are all the police who remember tall, well built uh, fellow Blair. At that time, there are three Blairs at the TSU. I always remember. 
8841 Blair, 8842 Blair, and 7821 Blair. 8841 Blair was known as Mazda Blair. Them days Mazda came in and they would say Mazda was a fast car. And Blair was always moving fast. So he was named, um, his car name became Mazda Blair. Up to a few years ago, he was working after he retired as security at the Citizens Bank. Um, so that is not that Blair. Then you had 8842 Blair. They used to call, we used to call him Fry Rice Blair. I don't know how he got the name, but that was the name Fry Rice Blair. And then the third Blair was 7821. All the police used to call him Sweet Smoke Blair. So you had Sweet Smoke Blair, you had Fry Rice Blair, and you had Master Blair. Well, the debt that we are announcing is that of 8842. We used to call him Fry Rice uh, Blair. The older policemen will, will know. And then we also had the debt, and I, I confirmed it this morning because it came to my attention yesterday that a retired woman, Sergeant Jennifer Langford of the Commissioner's Office um, died over the weekend. I wasn't certain about um, that because the information seemed to have been... I tried to get confirmation. I only got confirmation this morning, so um, I decided to announce. Many people might not remember her, but Jenny, was, Jenny came there um, with, the commission, with Commissioner Lewis. When Commissioner Lewis assumed office in 1990, he brought over some people from the National Guard Service into the regular force. Jenny was one of them. Pleasant, um, decent, we said, we said Red Oman, clear skinned person. She worked there um, in the commissioner's office. Information is that she passed away um, Friday morning. She passed away. Now, some people, the old police, these Blairs I'm telling you about here is before Rocky Blair, Manish Poppy, Rocky Blair, um, and before Dane Blair. And, and these blaze. So you had many blaze, but at that time I'm referring to, that was in the 70s. They were these three, uh, 7821, 8841, and 8842. But I remember there were other blaze as well, but I'm speaking about this particular period of time in the 70s with these three persons. So thank you, students. Thank you, students, for reminding me of, of that. So uh, Jerry passed um, uh, on, on Friday morning, I have my understanding. I want to take this opportunity to express condolences to all the relatives, the bereaved relatives, friends of those who have passed. And how can we um, not refer to when we talk about death, the death of the jailed Russian critic, the president critic, um, Alexei Navalny, uh, Navalny. He died in prison over, I think when maybe Friday or something, then he died in prison. I, you know, I read something last night that said the cause of death the cause of death, the officials will say the cause of death is sudden death syndrome. Sudden death syndrome, they say, is the cause of death of that critic who was jailed for 30 years. I know several attempts were made on his life. He was poisoned someplace and he ended, had to rush to Germany where he was treated. And they said it's some type of high tech poisoning. He was, and then he returned voluntary. He was jailed and it's all kind of thing. But you know, it's amazing how people who are critical of the Russian president. I, 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 I just died. They either fall through window. In the case of Navalny, sudden death syndrome. We had this guy who led this group, uh, the mercenary group. I know they call them mercenary, but the plane, the private plane that he was in fell out of the sky and he died. That was just a few months ago. So you have had so many persons who have been critical of the Russian president who have met um sudden death sudden death right um in circumstances which can only suggest that maybe these things was these things were not natural and you know we we, we talking about russia but remember we have had persons in guyana who have died who are critical of the government and individuals in government and die who can forget ronald waddle clear assassination who can forget um Kramiwin? Right, so uh, when I read about Navalny, I, I I I remember right away that look, don't um, point fingers because right in your own backyard you have people who are critical of the government and critical of individuals in the government are, are, um, have died under suspicious circumstances. Right, so uh, yeah, somebody remind me of Saturday Osa, the former minister of agriculture. Yeah, so we have these things um, to, to 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 look at. And the wife of Navalny, they have complained that they have refused to turn over the body. The prison authorities, the government 
have refused to turn over the body. I suspect you're going to get an ex um, what, what, the, what the guy named who had escaped from the Mazaruni prison? Smalley? That's what they refused to turn over the body, body of Smalley too. And I think he was cremated. So now once you're cremated, all the evidence, if there's any foul play or anything, everything gone. Everything gone. So we have our own um, thing. And somebody's reminded me of Mark Thomas Kazerki. Look, I love these students. I love these students. Kazerki is the man who died suddenly in um, the, the, the George Chung Hospital. And people, a lot was said. A lot was said. So, yeah, let me... Um, let me announce the board here, greetings, and then I'm going to bring in Mr. Conway. We can't leave. I can't bring in Mr. Conway on this sad um, note. I can't bring in on this sad death. Board days. Today is the board day of Woman Superintendent Angela Arden Fraser. Angie, board day is today. You know, Angie used to be all over finance office, general office, the division, um, the camera room training school. She spent some time there too. So Angela is celebrating her birthday today. <clears throat> also celebrating her birthday today is retired Superintendent Ramesh Ashram, former traffic chief. Ashram is celebrating her birthday today again. That's today. And uh, belated birthday greetings to retired Deputy Superintendent, I think she was, one and only Ingrid Wiltshire. Ingrid, Ingrid celebrating a board day today, and I told you yesterday, Ingrid, I'm looking forward to the announcement of this big sport that you are going to have. So Ingrid had a board day yesterday, and sometime last week, Woman Assistant Superintendent Michelle West celebrated a board day, and also former member Clyde Bino celebrated his board day recently. And also a special board day that was celebrated recently, I want to announce, that is the body of Mrs. Eunice Bombray. She is the mother of retired Deputy Commissioner of Police, Sydney Bombray, a good friend. And the reason why I mention it, because Miss Eunice Bombray celebrated her 100th birthday um, recently, 100th century. She made a century. So for all those who are celebrating today, all of those who celebrated recently, I want to wish you God blessings and hope that you live to see many, many, many more prosperous, happy, and uh, healthy uh, uh, bodies. What a wonderful thing, Mrs. Uh, Bombry. 100 years and still counting. God, that's, that, that's God's richest blessing. And for those other persons, I would hope that you would aspire, keep yourself healthy, do good, and try to get to 100. Most of you, most of us are far away from that. But I'm saying everything is in God's hands. If he, if it's his will that you should reach the 100, you are going to get to 100. Let me bring in CC for him to uh, make his uh, greetings and announcement. CC, welcome. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Yes, wonderful. And body greetings also, Ingrid. And all, 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 all the rest there. Happy birthday greetings. I was thinking, you know, Paul, I mean, I'm happy to be in the land of the living, but I'm thinking that with the large amount of students that we're getting now, we should really do a feasibility study or a cost benefit analysis to see whether we might go up a couple of stories or we might extend it, extend the, the building somewhat. Not like what they're doing with break down, going up 12 stories because they want to sell out of Larry. But, you know, things are going to happen. Yeah, as I said, we're going to consider perhaps even if not to be for Fridays or some other day to be a regular day, but at least to bring on. Because we have issues that people have been asking us to address. Uh, for example, we have been promising for months now to address the Police Discipline Act. We have not been able to do so because of time constraint. Um, only this morning, this, um, this student is asking us to deal with dismissal. And the amount of subject that the amount of things that we have um, to deal with is not going to be easy. And we have already taken a decision that is difficult to extend um, beyond the one hour and forty-five minutes which we are going up now. You know, this program started at one hour, you know, and we extended to one hour and thirty minutes. We extended now to one forty-five. Um, I don't, I'm not, I don't think we want to go behind one hour and forty-five. 
Um, in addition to that, we have done some short clips so you can go to YouTube or the same page and be able to um, see short clips dealing with specific subjects. So maybe a third day, and um, I'm thinking that if we go to a third day, then that third day we deal with a specific subject. For example, as I've said, we have this police discipline to deal about, to deal with. Perhaps we deal with that alone on the, the, the day. So we are going to consider it um, students and um, somebody said we need a few special guests. It's not easy to get special guests on the platform. Yeah? It is not easy. It requires some technical things, you know. So, uh, you know, people talk about calling and all. You see, it's not, it is not just like that. You have to have equipment. You have to be able to um, properly set up these things. So understand it, students. Understand it. We are trying to bring the information to you as best we could. Um, but some other things require um, hardware, require software. It is not always just come and talk. We can come and talk now and get the comments and we can respond to the comments. But if you want to bring on guests, if you want to um, do other stuff, it requires some effort that we ourselves are not perhaps capable of providing. We have to get technical assistance. But we're going to consider them. Now, moving on, I know Ulrich and these people are here. Cricket, in the in cricket. First of all, guy to take a licking. Um, RP Eagles, we take a licking at, in St. Kitts the other day. Lee was the one beat me up. The first game was um, ab we abandoned because Cow walk on the pitch and damage the pitch. The last game, Lee was Island, they get the guy there, can't remember his name now, two centuries, one in the first innings, one in the second innings. They said Ghana 400 and something to win, Ghana make 180 something or something like that. And who can forget that uh, that um, beating that India just um, give, gave to, to England? Orin and all of these people in the UK, I know if you're cricket fans, you would have seen it. Um, Jaishwal is the man at the moment. Jaishwal licks like peas on the English. So the basketball didn't work in this test. But a significant thing occurred to this during this test. I don't know if you were following this. Ravisanja Ashrin, the um, Indian spinner, after the third day um, or during the third day, they announced that he had some family emergency and he would take no further part in the game. And then the question of a substitute and all of that came in. And of course, he can have a sub to any substitute in feeling. But the rules uh, do not permit for anybody else to bowl and bat for him. Because that only applies to a concussion substitute. So um, they didn't say what the emergency was. But it was revealed yesterday that the emergency had something to do with the, the health of his mother. And you know what is being said? That the BCCI, that the Board of Cricket, the Board of Control of Cricket in India, they like the Cricket West Indies Board run the thing. They chartered a plane. They chartered a plane to take Rashrim uh, Ashwin from Rajkot, where this game was being played, to wherever his mother was. So he can see and be with his mother for a while. And then they brought him back. So everybody was shocked. I was shocked yesterday when he came back and he actually participated in the bowl and got a wicket. It shows you that when you have money and you can take care of your players, all kind of thing can happen. We don't expect a board like the uh, impecunious board, like the West Indies board, to do something like that. But I'm just showing you when you take care, you're treating your players and you're treating your employees. It goes beyond cricket, you know. It goes beyond cricket. When you treat your employees well, they are likely to produce more. So, Brings right to, it, it, it comes into this teacher strike and all that. You have to teach your teach your employees uh, well. Let me bring in Mr. Conway as a Guardian cricket fan. I'm sure you would have seen the or you, the, the, the the India versus England blows like first time. Uh, can't see, see? Uh, total destruction, total destruction. And, and I know how much you know the, the eagle did not land. The eagle did, did not land. You know. And, um, I think we number seven out of eight, you know, so I can't see us retaining the championship. But cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties. Well, let's look out and see what will happen. Yeah, it is indeed a, a game of glorious uncertainties, and therefore that is why we love it. That is why we love it so much. But I agree with you, it's difficult for the RP Eagles, who have not landed so far, to come back and retain that um, title. But who knows? Let's, let, let's, let's wait and let's see. Now, um, moving on, Moving on, I think one of the first things... Oh, I must 
again, congratulate the members of my course, Course 74, that first half, who um, observed their 50th anniversary on the 15th of this month, for a few days ago on Thursday. They observed 50 years. For those, the second half, those of us who have joined or who joined on the 1st of March, our 50th is rapidly approaching. And we have a WhatsApp group where um, we have been exchanging some memories, the group, and, and we, we, we're looking out for others to join, exchanging memories. 50 years is not 50 days. We had 50 years. Of that 50 years, we spent, in some cases, those who went in the training school on the 15th of February, spent six months and two weeks in training school. How we all came out, graduated on the 1st of August, 1974. And those of us who joined on the 1st of March, uh, 1974 spent exactly um, six months together, living together, three on 250 odd um, members. So we have this group and we are going to continue well beyond the anniversary to, to exchange. I have noted some people commenting that since they left Cheney School, they did not see nor hear from others. So they get this WhatsApp group now presents them with that opportunity to communicate so much so that people are asking us to send photographs because they can't even remember what you um, look like. So yeah, that is continuing. And I want to take this opportunity to, to um, the reunion, to remind you of the reunion, of course, 106, that is from 10916 Adams to 10950 Tyndall. You're asked to make contact with 10918 Leroy Charles. He can be reached on telephone number 347-463-5731. Or on Facebook, uh, Messenger. They, he's trying to organize a reunion. But before I go into the next subject, I got a short uh, art to play. Let me do that now, and then um, we're going to go. Let's listen, folks. The Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union will be hosting a special general meeting and elections on Saturday, March 2, 2024. The meeting and elections will be held both virtually and in person in the various regions. Members in Region 4 will be allowed to vote at the Critchlow Labor College, Wilford Avenue. The meeting will be held from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Members are asked to be on the lookout for information regarding online voting and regional polling places. Full participation of members is encouraged. Let us move your credit union forward. Yeah, that's an ad for the um, credit union. So um, I'm, I'm going to play this so that you can be reminded of this. All the members should get involved. There have been so much, so much controversy surrounding the management of that credit union. It got to the stage where the people were alleged to even be defying the order of the court. So let's hope that when this comes around, this whole issue is resolved and the persons who um, are elected are those who the members want to be um, in those positions. So yes, yes, that, that's what democracy um, is all about. Not this so-called thing, what some people talk about as um, democracy. Um, and I got in information that the online link, online link is out from today. So look out for the online link um, today. Um, let me move on um, to tell you the, what the first thing we wanted. Oh, court matter. Um, the 16th, that is um, last Friday, was the deadline for the lawyers, my lawyers and the lawyers representing Karim Bash in this civil lawsuit that he brought against me to submit the submissions. So I'm not sure that, that was the deadline, the 16th. So the judge is now, as far as I understand, um, a date will be provided when the decision into that matter will be handed down. I suspect that is going to com be communicated to me in due course. And then the next matter, you know, this um, trumped-up sexual assault case comes up tomorrow, March the uh, February the twentieth. And let me give a quick rundown of what happened. Here. I was charged this trumped-up allegation. I uh, when I turned up on the fifteenth of October, twenty twenty-one, to answer to the conspiracy to commit fraud charge, which was dismissed in December. That is the first time I learned that these allegations were made against me. Um, I was not required to plead because the charge was instituted indictably. And they had a real rock and roll roller coaster. Submissions were made, arguments were made. Um, then the chief magistrate, sorry, the magistrate in Code 3 um, became the acting chief magistrate. And she um, asked, well, she left the matter for Code 3 to be con uh, continued. The magistrate in Code 3 indicated it was a part matter 
and therefore that magistrate in court one should uh, rule on the matter. So it went back to the magistrate, um, the now acting chief magistrate. That acting chief magistrate ruled that um, she's going to allow for um, summary disposal. And at that stage, I was made to plea. And, you know, the, 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 the um, Volkswagenists and the police cooperate propaganda unit jump up and make us at a, uh, misleading statements. So what happened then is that once I pleaded to the charges, not guilty, of course, three charges, the matter was then sent back to Code 3 for trial. When the matter came up in Code 3, that was after the dismissal of the conspiracy to commit fraud charges against myself, Mr. Conway, and the others, the magistrate indicated that um, in the interest of justice, she is going to send the matter. She's not going to um, conduct the trial. She's sending the matter back to the chief magistrate for the chief magistrate to reassign the matter. So that comes up tomorrow morning where the chief magistrate is expected to um, reassign that matter to another uh, magistrate. So that is tomorrow uh, morning. I'll keep you up updated with these things. You know. And that is, remember, since the, since the 15th of um, October 2021, this is 2024. And these matters are still there, spending a lot of money on traveling and a, a lot of money it is causing you. But that's part of the weakness. And I am giving up. I am not giving up. I know what the outcome will be because these things are all untrue. They are trumped up. And therefore, I am anxiously awaiting the opportunity to go into the court and be vindicated. I don't want no Dharam Lal. I don't want no, um, no, no, no Nan Lal. I don't want no Irfanali. In other words, I don't want DPP to intervene to discontinue anything. I don't want that. I want the matter to go, evidence to be uh, presented, and be going to defend myself um, in, in this matter. So that is bringing you up to date um, with, with, with that aspect. Now to move on, I saw yesterday, Mr. Conway, um, I read, you know, I got up all in the morning, I read, and I saw you wrote a letter um, in relation to this strike and other issues. So I, maybe you will share your thoughts with our students this morning. CC, and I, I thought before I, 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 I bring you in, is that I thought it was an excellent letter. I read it. I think it was in one of the dailies. Well put together as usual. Well researched and well put together. Let, let us hear something about it, uh, CC. Actually, Paul, I, I listened to Anil Nanlal in his issues in the news last edition and he made some startling re revelations in dealing with the teacher strike he mentioned article 127 of the constitution of guyana and i don't take things at face value especially when it comes to certain persons including nanlal he talk about Article 137. And I jump into the Constitution and check Article 137. And Article 137 talk about the Police Service Commission. Here is what Article 137 one states. There shall be a Police Service Commission. And to, to explain, the composition and functions of the Police Service Commission are settled in Article 210, 211, 212. So he's talking about the nurses, the, um, the teacher's strike, and he quoted Article 127. I asked myself, you know, was, 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 it, was there a slip? Or was he true to form? You know? And he went on and he rambled a bit. He rambled about the teacher's strike, about the strike about the freedom to strike and he compare and contrast freedom to strike by teachers and free freedom freedom to strike and, and and yeah the freedom to strike by the teachers and he was very confusing in his advocacy so i look at article 147 now 137 Article 147, and here is what Article 147 say, said, except with his, with his or her own consent, 
no person shall be hindered in the employment to assemble, association and freedom to demonstrate peacefully. That is to say, his or her right to assemble freely, to demonstrate peacefully and to associate with persons and in particular to form or belong to political parties, trade unions, and other association for the protection of his or her interests. And two saying, except with his or her own consent, no person shall be hindered in the enjoyment of his or her freedom to strike. Three, neither an employer nor a trade union shall de be deprived of his or her right to enter into collective arguments. This is what the Constitution says. And it's Article 147, not 137, as, as mentioned by the Attorney General. I respect his Attorney General. He's got to be meticulous. He's got to be clear. He's got to be concise. And he's got to be accurate, unless the intention was to mislead the nation. Now, the thing is that this trike has been going on for some time. And it has the potentials to get out of hand and even to become violent. I'm, and unless it is nip in the bud, from my experience as a police officer, things can really get out of hand. There's need for the warring parties to sit down and talk, to sit down and eyeball one another, to talk frankly, to talk fairly, to, to have critical discussions. And I want to leave a quote from a book entitled Crucial Confrontation, Tools for Resolving Broken Promises, Violated Expectation, and Bad Behavior. It's written by four persons. And here's what it said. When we use the word confrontation, we're using it in the following way. To confront means to hold someone accountable face to face. Although the term can be abusive, abrasive, that's not what we have in mind. In fact, when confrontation are handled correctly, both parties talk openly and honestly. Both are candid and respectful. And as a result, problems resolve, relationship benefit. This statement is, is applicable to those persons involved in the strike and the government officials. And there's another book by the same writers entitled Critical Conversation, Tools for Taking tools for talking when stakes are high. I wish to recommend it to them. So the thing is, what I'm positing really is that they, this is time for those persons concerned, those warring parties to sit down and talk, sit down and have frank discussion, sit down and have honest discussion, eyeball each other. That's the only way out or things is going to get very much out of hand with devastating consequences. And also saying that it's time that the AG stop misleading people. If he's going to quote the constitution, he must quote correctly and not leave it like that. He's, he's got to be meticulous, he's got to be accurate, and he's got to be concise. But the bottom line is, I'm, I'm suggesting that it's time to talk and those people must get together and talk. I think the union and the teachers has indicated their willingness to talk, but there is a definite silence on that of the government officials. But I'm saying, let them talk. Let them talk if they want to. You know the song? Because talk don't talk bother don't me. Bother me. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. So I agree with you. They have to sit and they have to talk. But if you look at the government posture, the government has a confrontational posture. So they started out by saying that the strike is illegal. That is, that is how they start. They started out by saying that they're gonna, they're not gonna pay the um, teachers for the days um, they have not worked. That is confrontational. And the attorney general, the same attorney general you referenced a while ago, went and tried to justify why the people should not be paid uh, and all of that. They even went so far as to allege the, the second vice president alleged uh, or alluded to uh, um, financial impropriety on the part of the union because he said since 2004 they did not submit some accounts or some records or something like that. And I have to remind persons 
that in 2018, when the coalition was in government, the teachers went on strike, and this very opposition leader and the um, PPP who were in opposition at the time supported the strike. They're on record as supporting the strike. Now they are in government when they can um, make an impact and try to resolve this thing. They are decided. They have decided to be confrontational, and suddenly the strike is political. They claim as well because they they advance the argument that the general secretary of the teachers union, Coretta McDonnell, who is a opposition MP, because she's an opposition MP, this strike is political, and we have to remind them or inform some people that the, the, the General Secretary of the Guyana Agricultural Workers Union, GAU, who is closely affiliated to the government, PPP and the government, is also a member of parliament, and they are on record for calling strikes. So when they call the strikes, those strikes are not political. And you would know that those strikes are resolved very, very quickly in favor of the striking um, sugar workers, but no respect uh, for the teachers. And you know, what is the, the, the game? Let me understand it. Let me read this thing through. They're taking away the pay uh, for the teachers who have not worked. They have decided that they are not going to deduct union dues on behalf of the union. And they are playing a game of attrition to make sure, squeeze the teachers, let me see how long they can stay out without being paid. That is what the aim is. That is how I assess this whole thing. They are going to sit back there. They are decided we're not going to talk. Uh, let me see how long the teachers can stay out, especially since we are not paying them. Let's see how long uh, they're going to stay uh, until they buckle under the, the non-payment of salaries and, and return to, to schools. And in the meanwhile, a lot of propaganda, a lot of propaganda. The, 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 the usual suspects are there spewing a lot of nonsense in the social media and the regular media. As my colleague, Mr. Conway, has said, Matured people in circumstances like these will sit and will talk. Matured people will sit and will try to iron out the differences. Not to be confrontational. The teachers have a right for, to strike. The teachers are justified in striking. Because when you see the conditions, I, I read some time ago the salary scale of those teachers. Appalling. Appalling. And, you know, doing some research recently, I am... Um, came across the same with the police, the, 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 the allowances for policemen. I have the, the information, but I don't think time will permit today uh, for me to deal with that. The appalling, when I, I mentioned before, if you have a master's degree in the police force, your education allowance is $312, 312 Ghana dollars a ma for master's. Russian allowance in some of those interior locations $2,225 a month. That is what is going on. And you have people in the police association and those places are not making representations on behalf of the rank. I'm going to dedicate a program to deal with some of these ridiculous allowances. Ridiculous allowances. Separation allowance. I think I remember $2.50 $2 a day. $2.50 a day is separation allowance for police rank who was separated from his family and is in one of those difficult locations in the interior. That is what is going on. I'm talking about that. Let me show you a video, a very short video. Let me show a video to show you the police, uh, the conditions under which policemen are working. And let, let me uh, um, say up front, it is clear that the person who took the video and know nothing about taking video. The man tried to explain to you what he should do, but you will get the gist of what is going on. Let me let me show you it. Look at it. Right? There you have video there now. Now it's videoing, okay. right? So now it's videoing. Right? Let me go press it, right? Come through. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so good morning. Um, we wake up this morning to the carry crew. Where is the carry crew? Unbelievable look at the condition of the police station, you know. Unbelievable. You get the whole thing in your car. Policemen inside, they're working. You know, we hadn't a chance to work with them, but I had to sign in as a
policemen live like this in this in this part of the in this part of Guyana. The fastest growing, the fastest growing economy, the fastest growing economy. Yeah? It's interesting to know that well, look, this is this is the Karaku where you got region seven, the, the, you know, you got a commandant and interesting. Region seven. Historic no, you're absolutely okay. mm. Yeah, that is what I don't think it's um, the video was not great, but I think you get the gist of what was being um, shown and what was being said. The person was showing you the current Ikeruku police station. This is a police station in Region 7, one of the interior uh, locations. But well, you can see a dilapidated building that is where the policemen work and live because in those areas you work and live in the same building. You cook, you eat, you bathe, you do everything in the same building. And it, an indication of the poor working conditions of ranks. And this is not a um, an isolated case. Many of the stations, many of the stations are like that. And then the question is asked, as I said before, you have the police association. They have a responsibility, a statutory responsibility to look into welfare issues affecting ranks and to bring those issues to the attention of the administration of the force. I want to know if... Any one of them ever visit one of those, um, or Ikeruku in particular, and have they informed the uh, administration of the atrocious conditions under which these ranks have to live and work? Have they done so? Have they done so? And the, the, the thing is, as we have said before, the only interest in this present police association was to collect the list of persons to be made or to be sent to parliament to be part of the police um the the, the, the the police service commission and once that was done and all of those persons were promoted all of the persons who were a part of the police association that's it they haven't done as far as i'm aware there's no evidence that they have done anything to bring welfare issues to the administration which is the statutory responsibility well i know my colleague cc worked in the interior he was commander of the what was then enf um, divisions as all the interior location. I'm sure he will have a lot to say. I think he was even stationed at Ikeriku at some stage. CC, over to you. You saw there what the station looks like. At least I got a glimpse of what the station looks like. What are your views, my brother? Deplorable. And also, I have some photographs of the interior of the station. I, I don't want to, to to publish it. And yes, I work at Ikeriku, you know. I was a station sergeant at Ikeriku, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Ikeriku because activities at Ikeriku impacted on my personal and my professional life. As a sergeant of, of Ikeriku, and I'll give you some history, the sergeant who was in charge of Ikeriku, in those days you had Guyana Air Risk Corporation, these are domestic flight. So the sergeant there was a GAC agent. The sergeant there was a postmaster. The sergeant there was a mines officer in the absence of mines officers, and the sergeant there was a met man. So I functioned apart from my policing duties as a GAC agent, as a mines officer, as a postal agent, and as a met officer. We used to get GAC flights once per week, unless they had added cargo to, to, to send in. And that's the only, was only one way in, one way out to Ikeriku. When the plane comes and it leaves, Till next week, you, you you have to wait. That's the only way in and out. I think they built some road from Corpuna where they can use river and roadway. But the only way that you could have was was Ikeriku was in and out by by GSC. And this is where I learn my or I horn hone hone my letter writing skills because you really had no telephone there. The only means of communication was by a radio set. So you have to write letters and write letters and, 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 and write letters all the time. And we used to look forward when a plane comes to have a, a, a letter from someone. And, and I can remember, you know, when I was there, I got a letter from my wife telling me that I was I that I was a father, that she got a daughter, and she sent a photograph. And the next the next day, that the next week. I purchased a plane ticket from Sergeant Conway, Sergeant 1927 Conway, the, the GAC agent, 
and it cost, I think it was $90 then, and traveled to Georgetown. And then the next year I traveled to Leguan because by then my wife had gone to Leguan with, with her mother shortly after she got a baby. So I traveled to Leguan and I remember I went in the house. I, took, I didn't take off my socks. I went and I checked the little girl and she looked like my little sister, you know. I had no doubt from the inception that, she, that I was the father. And then my mother-in-law said, come, come, brothers, come, come. Take off your socks. I want to show you something. I reluctantly took off, to, took off my socks. And then she said, watch this baby too and watch your too. Watch your baby too and watch it too. That is our DNA in, in terms of, you know, identifying the, the thing. Now, um, after then, I got transferred to the police training school. And there are many persons there at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the college right now who don't want to stay there. I want to tell them something, you know. After I got transferred, I made some moves. Light Barker was the commissioner of police. And Light Barker, I had some friends who were friends of Light Barker or knowing to him. And I made move and they went and they spoke to Light Barker. And Light Barker said, look, let me tell you something. I don't know that sergeant well, but the reports I got from my senior officers is that you will become a good instructor and you become a senior officer. And if you want him, you could take him for work with you in the bush. So I reluctantly went to the police training school. And the place that I don't want to stay, that I don't like to work, I give it my best shot. And the thing is that the same place that I don't like, that I don't want to work, I moved from a sergeant to an assistant superintendent. The police service commission promoted me from a sergeant to assistant superintendent. I didn't have to pay any money, neither it wasn't political as the case may be. So sometimes when transfer comes and you block it, you, 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 you might be blocking your blessings. I remember promotion comes from the Lord. So I tell the people, especially those who are presently at the college here, stay and give it your best shot. And let me just promote me, let me just talk a little bit about the transfer. I was the OC at Romvelt. I was on leave. 90 days leave, and then Larry Lewis, the commission, sent for me. I went there, and I saw him, and the first thing he said, Conway, you look like a terrorist, because I had two months old beard on, on my face. But use a fancy word in front of the terrorist. And then I recall, I recall that Baron Passard was living in Rumvel compound, and we used to reach and drink beers at a Chinese place and eat chachikai chicken. And then, and the week before, that held Baron Passard and charged him with treason. So I said, oh, Chris, like Baron, was he called me name in this treason thing there? So Larry Lowe said, you look like a, he called the word terrorist. I said, sorry, I'm going to leave. He said, furthermore, I hear you're a very ambitious young man. I said, yes, so Oh, you're telling me yes? Well, you're the man I want. I said, I'm a college in Barbies. And I want you to go. And said, it was a Friday afternoon. I said, so what made me leave? He said, thank you. God bless you. Monday morning, find yourself in Borbis. And I went there, you know, and performed well. I remember we started from scratch, and Desmond Height, who was president, opened, declared, the, commissioned the, 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 the college. College has produced quite a number of outstanding officers. And I spent, I went there for six months. I didn't want to go. And let me make a point too that after he transferred me, my wife, who's a nurse, was on my duty. And my children, two children then, they, they were just about school age. And when she went, I used to live in Durban Street in a bottom flat. I didn't have my own house. And when she left in the night to go to work, she used to tuck them up under the netting, lock up the house, and pray to God that nothing would happen to them. Well, they were good children. I think they'd take after their mother to, to be good children. And went to Borbis, and many a days I used to travel from Borbis, cross with the last boat, and then rush back to Borbis with the first boat in the morning. I remember for instance, Felix was the commandant of Borbis there, and a couple of times he saw me, he said, Can't we like you get like you get girls in Borbis in Yomsadam? And he used to smile, he didn't know I was rushing to Borbis, rushing to Georgetown and come back. 
And as God will have it, God works in mysterious ways. Eh? And don't, don't forget that about six weeks after my transfer, my wife's niece applied for a job, a teaching job, and they give her a school in Georgetown. And she come and she asks her, her, her aunt if she could stay with her. And that was it where my wife had a helper to look after the children, especially when she worked in it. So don't block no transfer. Go ahead and you transfer. And the same place in, I, I mentioned adventure. I, got, I spent four years there and I got three promotions in four years when I was five years in the rank of an, as, as an ASB. So I'm telling people, don't block transfer. Go ahead. You don't know what is there for you. And I'm talking to those ranks who are those sergeants who are disgruntled, who are at the police college of Larry and don't want to stay there. Stay there, perform, give it your best shot. God is in charge. God is in charge indeed. I have a similar story, but I'll not tell, I won't tell it now. How I uh, remained in the force and became um, corporal sergeant inspector in a short space of time. I remember that promotion with you, CC, from sergeant to um, assistant superintendent. Because at that time, I was on that same promotion list as I was an inspector. And um, the, I was promoted from inspector to ASP. I remember you and uh, Leon Trim were promoted from a sergeants, from sergeants to um, ASP. I remember that very well. I also remember the opening of the, um, the Felix Austin Barbies because I was there um, look, um, overseeing the ceremonial aspect of that uh, parade. And we have some very good memories about the preparation and all of that. I was there, uh, Mr. Ait as president, Mr. Lewis as commissioner. And there's a particular incident at the end of the uh, parade when we had the lowering of the flags and your squaddy 9112 trim was there supervising that. And the people weren't lowering it in, in unison. And he spoke under his breath and he used some flowery language but we, we could have overheard um, what he, 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 he said. And everybody played as if they didn't hear, but we all are, including the commissioner. I suspect the president as well, because they weren't coordinating the lowering of the flag as he wanted it. And he spoke to his teeth. And that was a big laugh thereafter. So, yeah, I'm glad you share your experience um, with especially the young policemen on this thing. They like run around when they hear they get transferred. Um, I got transferred, my first transfer. From the TSU was in 1993 when I was already a superintendent transfer under some um, circumstances that I wasn't pleased with. But I went there and my career as an outstation commander, my, parade, my career as a commander was launched from that. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me um, no, um, Sean, he did not be the triple jumper. He was qualified. The big difference is that he did not skip, he skipped one rank from sergeant to ASP, and that is not unusual. Many people have skipped that rank. In the case of the triple jumper, that is um, unheard of in the history of the Guyana Police Force, where a man without any uh, qualification is promoted from inspector to superintendent, unheard of, never heard of it uh, before. So let's let's get the record um, straight. Uh, somebody said Leon Trim, the former lion. Oh, Leon Trim wasn't a lion. He was a crime chief. A good friend of mine, he was a crime chief. But let me move on. And I'm moving on to this controversy over the disqualification of this school child for singing a song in the junior uh, mass competition. You know, she sang a song, and the name is Tell Me How We, How we Must Survive on 6.5. She sang this song. I listened to it last night. How We Must Survive on um, 6.5. That is what the song is. And the band, is, the band, she said the thing was inappropriate. And um, they banned her from the um, children, the, what, the children mass competition, the, 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 the band. Her. But this is so sad. They are censoring a child from singing. Nothing in this thing can be said to be um, can be said to, to be insultive. Nothing can be said to be uh, antisocial. There is nothing in this thing that you can say to be um, beyond the pale, and therefore this thing should not be. I listened to it last night. As a matter of fact, um, with the ban and the backing, you have to listen carefully to hear some of the words. How oh, we must survive on 6.5. She was um, she was referencing 
the 6.5 increase that public servants get. And she, she made some very good, the lyrics, listen to it, it's on YouTube. I went to YouTube last night and I listened to it. Nothing smutty or, 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 or that. Nothing smutty, nothing that you can say was indecent. And they banned it from playing and then they came to try to justify. And you know, I raise this because I am saying and I'm reminding us because when these things happen, we tend to view them in isolation. Shouldn't view them in isolation. Back in 2013, the, the Calypso Championship was won by the, the, a man by the name of Lester Charles. He went as the, the singer name was The Professor. And he sang a song which says, God don't sleep. That on um, YouTube again. I invite you to go and go on YouTube. God don't sleep by the professor. Beautiful song, beautiful lyrics, talking about situations um, in, the, in the country at the time. Social commentary, as you would call it. And Ropes and Men, Ropes and Men, the same Ropes and Men who is now Minister of Home Affairs. At the time, Ropes and Men was the Minister of Transport and Hydraulics. This was in 2013. Ropes and Men went into NCN the National Communications Network, owned by the government of Guyana. And he banned the song, he banned that Calypso from being played. He banned the Calypso from being played on the airwaves. And let me read some of the things, and this I'm quoting here from Starbrook News of March the 2nd, 2023. You know, I like to give me references, you know. Canada sit back there, and um, also for say you're telling lie on them, and then they want to tell you they will sue for defamation of character. Let me quote part of the letter, that the, the article that was in the paper. This is March the 2nd, 2013, Sabbath News. Ben asked, ben asked about his involvement in the, in the saga yesterday, said he went into the station of NCN after airing the lyrics of reigning Calypso monarch Lester the Professor Charles winning rendition, God Don't Sleep being broadcast on the state-owned radio station. He said he found the lyrics of the song to be slanderous and abusive and thought it inappropriate for NCN to be playing the song. None of the things described in the music could hold up in court, and as such, he could not support the playing of the music on NCN. That is what Ben said. He goes on to say, and here again, here consistency, you know, here he says, I didn't mind if it was perhaps played on other on other places which I was not associated with, but I felt it should not have been played on the government radio station, and I expressed that view, and I still hold that view. He goes on to say, signs was, well, not he, the article goes on to say, signs were subsequently placed in the network studio, instruct, instructing announcers not to play the song until further notice by order of management. The signs were subsequently taken down after the issue made public. The issue was made public and drew intense criticism. He goes on, and the quote in Benny to say, I said it is not for me to tell you to stop playing it, but I said I don't think it should be played. Now, what, what nonsense is that? You walk into the studio. You don't have portfolio. That is not part of your portfolio. They tell you are Minister of Transport and Hydraulics. And you tell them that, look, you don't think it should be played. That amongst an order. That amongst a ban. And then let me let me quote some other part. Responding to claims that he should not have gone to NCN and made the inquiries, Ben said, uh, and the quote in here, I quote, I hold it as my right to go to the station to intervene in any activity which I think impacted me as a citizen and also as a government minister. He's, he also said, that if any other government minister witnesses an act committed in an in an area under his supervision, he expects a similar position will be taken. And then the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport at the time, Frank Anthony, just said, Minister Anthony has shied away from commenting directly on the situation, saying it is the responsibility of the network. But up to, up to yesterday, more than a week after the ban, NCN had said nothing on the matter, even after acting Chief Executive Officer Michael Gordon promised that the, note, that the network would issue a, a statement. So I'm saying again, this is not an isolated thing where they banned this child. Perhaps they have never banned a child before, but
But the professor, it was the reigning Calypso. The man won the Calypso competition with the song named God Don't Sleep. And then Robeson Men, who was a retired minister of works, transport and hydraulics, he heard the song and he went into NCN. And the allegation is that he instructed them not to play the song on the radio because he personally found it um, offensive. And you want to tell me this is not autocratic and dictatorial behavior? Let me, let me say this. They like to refer to um, they like to refer to Burnham as a dictator. But some of the things that they're doing now, Burnham never did. Like banning, um, getting involved in culture and banning music. Many, and, and the, the older folks will know, when you come to satire and calypso and thing, people sang um, things about Burnham. People had satirical shows and so on. And, and Burnham accepted those things. But here you have people like Ben and others, as soon as you say anything critical, that they consider critical. It doesn't necessarily have to be critical, but if they feel offended by the truth, because it, the, the song saying that 16.5, how are you going to live on 16.5? This is, is the truthful thing. How can you survive on 16.5? But they ban the, the, the song. They, but let me bring in Mr. Conway for him to obviously say on this issue. You see, what are your views on the government? The government telling um, a child that this song is inappropriate uh, to be sung at the competition. Let me hear your views on this, my brother. It, it, it's shocking. It's deplorable. And when you look at it, you know, I look at Calypso across the Caribbean. Remember Gabby, government boots. Remember Gabby, Jack don't want her to bathe on a beach. And I'm going to chalk nothing but three blind mice, Bonham, Eric, and Manley. And, and we had a rebel. Used to sing for the only thing they used to give second till they had to give the first prize, but they didn't ban them, 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 them songs. Eh? And you gotta look at it in another way. This thing will have psychological effect on that little girl. I repeat, it'll have significant emotional effect on her. You know, I did I did a one year program with the UG, Psychology of Adult Learning. And and that that we deal with andragogy, that's how adults learn. And then we have to deal with pedagogy, how children learn. And the point they make that children learn what they want to learn. So children learn what you want them to learn and adults learn what they want to learn. And if you don't do, if you don't treat them a certain way, they will vote with their feet that they walk away from it. And it's going to have significant emotional effect on all. That's why I'm happy. I see some persons in Barbies, they started to take her in hand, give her a lot of trophies and other financial things. I see our good friend, um, Colin Bino has been actively involved. I think he got some overseas persons to really donate things and promise to make further donations for us. For her. And Colin Bino is an educator. And those people who don't know, when he graduated, he, Colin, his wife, and his daughter graduated at the same time. But getting back to this thing we are called significant emotional effect. Paul, you could remember, Years ago, we attended a one-week training program by Guy Mine, and we were dealing with public, with um, problem students. Those are the Lloyd Barkers, all that we attended. And they're saying when you have a prob serious problem with an employee, to use a common term, they said, dig a scene. Significant emotional effect. Create an activity that will have significant emotional effect. And that person will always remember that. Let, let, let me go back to when I was stationed at Maikuni. Living in Barbies, West Coast Barbies. I book out the morning, a Saturday morning on weekend pass. 
I used to ride a bicycle and I ride my bicycle to Borbis. And by the time I reached home at Britannia West Coast Borbis, the well at police was there that I must return immediately to my Coney police station. Reluctantly, I rode back to my Coney. And there was a sergeant sitting on his desk. He said, come back. I said, yes, sergeant. Well, sergeant is in number 4899 Brown. I think he had about two more years to go in the, in the job. And he said, you book out this morning. I said, yes. He said, bring the diary. I brought the diary. He said, see the entry record there. Yes. He said, read the subject. I said, constable left. Read the entries. 6, 10 a.m., constable 1927 Conway left on weekend pass for his residence, Britannia, West Coast Borders. He said, check the diary. And see, check the entry and see if anything wrong. I check for a while. I say, yeah, something is wrong. Here you are. I sell the fourth me reference number. He said, well, you put in your reference number and then go back on your weekend pass. And from that day, it had a significant emotional effect on me. From that day, anytime I was a, anytime I'm making an entry in the diary, I make sure that I put in my reference number. I think if you go to the station now, you can see reference number. Missing. I never know they know more. So this thing has got to get significant emotional effect on, 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 on this little child. And I'm happy that they're taking our on hand and they will deal with our coaching, deal, deal, deal with our mentoring and other things. Because it is ridiculous. This this administration doesn't know what the what, what they're doing to that child. And here there's another one. One read a poem which is his political and, and they disqualify that person too. So they, they got to be careful. And also, I think the, the three judges who were influenced by politicians, they're backing down now, but they want the name called. I got the names. Why well, I won't call the names. They, they're backing down. So that was ridiculous to the highest extent. A little eight year old child, you're going to ban her huh? for singing a calypso? Or, or are you attacking our culture? I wonder if, if it was a chutney show, what really would happen? Oh, yeah, you're good to wonder because, again, these things are not um, always what they seem. Now, let me say this. I, I love my students. You know, I love my students. Earlier, I might have said 16.5 in reference to the increase. It's 6.5, you know. So if you hear me say 16.5, don't um, – I know you all like to spend money that you all get here. The next year, you're slow in the know, so slow the sight. That we get in 6.5 and it must be so. No, no, no. You got in 16.5. It is 6.5. Let me repeat that for emphasis. And again, it was a mistake. It was a slip of the tongue. It was 6.5. I meant, I meant six. The name of the song is 6.5 in reference to the increase that public servants, public servants got at the end of last year. 6.5. That I think it was taxable um, as well. So, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. I made a mistake, a slip of the tongue. And see, see, the, the, the course that you referred to, at the Lloyd Marcus Hall, I remember that course very, very well. Because it was around the time when I was making application to go to University of Guyana. And I remember I had to be running at, at, at some stage. I think the guy named uh, was Cummins. Um, Cummins um, was the, one of the main uh, presenters. You also had an Indian guy with him. They were from the um, Guy Mine Training Institute. Am I correct? Wasn't it Cummins? Yeah, co Cummins, Cummins. I remember the guy. I can't remember the, the but Indian guy. But I remember his first name. Yes. Well, no, he had a brother in the, yes. in, in, in the force as well. And he was Arlie some on, on the quarantine. I'm fact, he had two brothers, Arlie Quinn, and a, a by the TSU by the name of Cummins was also his brother. He was some way from the quarantine. I remember that very well. So yes, we, we went through all of those programs. But CC, let me move on. Let me move on. Time is all is done hour and a half already. I can't go into any one of the major subjects. But I got um something I want to to, to 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 mention. Two things as a matter of fact. One, I want to, you know, we had again somebody, you know, Jerry was assassinated. I gotta use the correct term. We just killed by drive by shooting He was assassinated um some time ago. Uh, outside of week house last week, you show the tape with the bullets firing, and it show it show when he came out of the yard, and then shortly after, you hear uh, gunshots ringing out. 
Andretti died. I think he was married yesterday. But then a few days ago, too, I read where um, an attempt was made on the life of someone else. They claimed two men on motorcycle. This guy somewhere on the metal bank or somewhere he lived, as he was entering his yard, two men pulled up on motorcycles. They fired shots at him. Uh, he was struck several times. The latest is that he remains critical uh, in hospital. But, you know, up to now, no arrests in the Jedi um, assassination, no address in this one as well. I, I don't know what is going on. Perhaps when you have these type of killings, um, no, no, no arrest is made. Because we remember paper shards some time ago. Paper shards, men riddled paper shards with an AK-47 or some similar firearm in front of Palm Court. And for those of you who don't know, Palm Court is on Main Street. And Palm Court is like about 100 yards, I think, from the president's official residence. And no serious anyway. Lots of allegations were made into, uh, uh, about that. Lots of allegations by Sergeant Bascom and others as to the cover-up and how much money is alleged paid to the ranks at major crime to cover up this murder. Lots of allegations made. But significantly, no lead. We have not been kept. The public has not been kept up to date as to what is um, going on with these I profile murders. You got to call them that. Because when a man comes out of a wake house or comes out of a yard and we, we saw the tape or we heard the bullets, bullets firing like if you're in a war zone, man is killed. Initial release on the police about the um, incident, nothing more. Same thing with this man a couple days ago. Man riddled. Somebody said 10 shots. And then I'm hearing, well, 10 shots might have been fired. Or the police might have recovered uh, 10 casings, but the, the, the victim wasn't struck that many times. But you're not hearing anything. You're not hearing anything about what is going on with these uh, matters. No update to the, 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 the public. None at all. And that is part of the problem that brings about a lack of confidence in the system. Lack of confidence. Let somebody, uh, for example, you had an incident where a shooting took place by um, John Fernand some time ago a man was killed. They found it necessary to say that the car on the scene was once owned by Mark Benchcap or the van or something like that. Even though the records show that Mark Benchcap would have parted with that vehicle many, many years before. But they think it was necessary to link Mark Benchcap's name to the vehicle even though the vehicle uh, was sold. That is the type of, I don't know if you call it journalism on the part of some, that is kind of reporting on the part of them. And I see again, the police cooperate communication unit is not a communication unit. It is a propaganda unit. That is what it is. Look at the releases that they give. The most unprofessional releases you can have. They have a, something, for example, you have a simple raid. They put the vehicle, police vehicle number. They put the name of the ranks who are in, involved in that. Perhaps without recognizing that they are exposing those persons to danger. They had a raid at a school in Wolford Avenue. They put the name of the school. They put the names of the teachers and the policemen who are involved in that operation. Can you believe that? You have a school where they found a whole set of scissors uh, and, and, and it, le it led to the suspicion that perhaps they're, they're chopping weed at the school. But more than that, they saw it necessary to put the names of the uh, teacher and the other teachers who were involved in that operation. Also the names and rank of the policemen who were involved in that operation. How can you say that that is a professional unit? How can you say that? Huh? How can you? Cece, let me hear your views on, on that, my friend. Paul, this, this thing is frightening. At all it seems, they're finding spentials. Some In some cases, they're finding warheads. They didn't say whether they were, the warheads were damaged or not. And I want to know what really happening with the ballistics, what happened with the ballistics? And if they're not getting any match, but they found significant similarities with 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 with, with, with um Travis Chase weapon, they found significant similarities. They don't find much, you know, significant similarities. All these all these shootings that are going on. So it's telling me if they're not matching, you know, this. Wrongs are defined a match with the one that we 
uh, two weeks ago, as the case may be. So it's saying, it telling us that there are different weapons being used. And the police cannot trace anything to ballistics. And only that, they're not meticulously checking the scene to see whether they can find traces, whether they can get forensic evidence, things like fingerprint and them kind of thing. No? They're, not, they're, not, they're, not, they're, not look, they're not finding any forensic evidence. They got a Russian trained forensic expert struggling as a force training officer when she should have been there dealing with forensic science on this on the scene. All the shooting and all the shooting, they can't find a single trace that this this thing much, this thing much, or they, they, some, something is definitely wrong. And I say it is frightening because it gives the impression that there are several there are different guns different weapons being involved in 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 the in the, in, in, in the shooting and we're not doing any proper crime scene management they're giving away them crime scene too too easily too quickly they must do meticulous investigation look for traces the last time i mentioned about local theory of exchange the perpetrator is going to carry away something or something going to left there, a piece of fiber, a hair, a fingerprint, a short button, something, something might be left there. But no, they, 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 they want confession and they're looking for confession and confession is the only thing. And when it goes through the window, the case gone with it. The case gone with it when it goes through the window. They, 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 um, I see that there's something here on the current family teach song. I remember one of the songs I don't want no man on my island. That was um, family teach, and he had a few others, but um, they, for the persons who are inquiring, family teach did sing, I don't want no man on my island, and that's something else. I can't remember the other songs, uh, right now. Well, you're right, you're right. The, the, the fact that um, you're having these uh, bullets being fired, people are being killed assassination style, you recover empty casing, and you're unable to say whether they match with some other um, scene, suggesting either you're so incompetent that you can't make a proper match, or that perhaps different firearms are being used. And if different firearms are being used, it makes it even more worrying. It makes it even more worrying, because I recall in the past, people would say um, the, the evidence from this scene match the evidence from some previous scene so you were fairly sure that this was the same firearm that is being used but you're hearing that now which seems to suggest if they are not incompetent is just that they are unable to make the match because it's different firearms being used and the suggestion therefore and that these are all illegal firearms because the system as i know it you should have a record and they did say that in the Travis case matter that they had a record of all licensed um firearms as mr conway had indicated some time ago, I was instrumental in the implementation of that um, process. We have a database of the, um, the, the, the the DNA or the ballistic of all firearms that are licensed in Ghana. But why did they continue? Why did they doing that now? What if when people go to renew, they make sure that um, the ballistic e evidence or the ballistic records are available? I just wonder. I just want to, because so many things have fallen apart over the years, it would not surprise me to know that this one has been discontinued or is not continuing in the manner um, that it was intended and that it has, in the manner it started. So you see, the last subject I want to bring this morning, let me make sure is the last one, man. I know you're a training man. So, you know, there was a big announcement the other day that the junior officer course launch that the police junior officer course started i understand they have overseas students they have students from agencies outside of the Ghana police force i understand there's a little bit of i shouldn't say controversy or worry but some people have expressed some concern that of the content of the program one specific um aspect i understand is has to do with equitation in other words, 
people are being taught how to ride and how to groom horse. And some people have said, but that has no relevance to where I work. Because where I work, we don't have horses. So why would you want to spend, I think they say up to one week, why do you want to spend one week with me to tell me about horses? And when I graduate from this course and I go back to my um, home organization, I ain't gonna have to do so it's a wasted week for me. That is the feeling that some people have been expressing. I don't know, CC, I'm bring in, I don't know if you, you are that, and what are your views uh, 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 about that? CC? I, I heard it, and I'm still to confirm because I understand it's not one week, it's two weeks of equitation horse riding. And you train because of need, yeah? I don't know how they come to get it training needs. What the police force should do is to do a task, a job task analysis countrywide. It, to identify training needs, it takes a lot of time. It is scientific, but it is is going to be very very useful. And that here, I'm scared. Somebody just said, "I'm say, do this and do that and all kind of thing." There. What the police should do is that they should, if they want to identify some training needs. Look at what is happening in what's coming out in the press. Look at what is coming out in, in orderly room. Look at what's coming out in, 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 in investigations by OPR, by police complaints authority. Look, look at what's coming out at the executive leadership team meeting and a whole lot of other things they got to look. They can't just say equitation and this. And then man in the city constabulary, he, he don't write horse. So how are you going you, 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 you to train him to write horse? And I know if they will see people if they have any mountain branch in, 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 in the area, you know. It, it, it's you, you train for needs. Otherwise, you, you, you'll you be waste, wasting, wasting the, 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 the training, man. Uh, you train for needs. You make an assessment. You're, you're, you're short in this area. There's obvious evidence that you're lacking in a particular area. And therefore, you train to improve the skills and to develop skills in a particular area. That's how I know it. But perhaps these people are different, you know, they know it differently. But as, again, I, 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 I agree with you. Because if a particular section does not have, let's say, um, a mounted section, those people are not likely to show any interest or have any interest in learning how to groom and how to ride ours. So perhaps the thing has to be better tailored um, uh, for the needs. And the last topic, you know, we have so many things, but we get after day after tomorrow, Wednesday, we're here again. Because we have not spoken about the Venezuelan development. But one thing I want to close us close out, uh, on here now is this allegation of money laundering, CC. We're not hearing anything further. The allegation where a senior police officer sometime in December um, deposited $16.5 million in the police credit union. Um, the latest information I got that the, the, the person claimed that though that was a gift, he said it was a gift before, during, and after a particular activity. He said it was a gift. And he attempted or he, he deposited, it was returned to him. And I understand, well, I know for a fact that the persons who, who uh, returned the money were all victimized because they have been removed from that area. Remove people using the power, move you to some other area, all because you did the correct thing. And we said before on this program, this is a matter, they are serious allegation. And remember, it's just an allegation, there's no evidence to confirm what is said is true. But the only way you can confirm or um, not confirm is by conducting a credible um, investigation. And I made the point that, in my view, the unit to conduct this investigation should be the financial um, investigated uh, intelligence unit. The because they have a mandate to deal with money laundering. I said last week, they only recently uh, were accepted as Guyana in this um, body to deal with financial investigating or final intelligence unit recently. It is a matter to be investigated. It's an allegation. Allegations can be made. But you have to investigate because how else would you know if it is true? And if it is true, how do you have a senior, senior police officer sitting in a position and using the position to land the money? That is a serious allegation which needs investigation. But I am not going to hold my breath 
We can't remember a serious allegation was made against the current second vice president that he entertained. Well, the allegation wasn't he entertained because the evidence is there that he entertained Chinese businessmen in his living room. The allegation was that um, he, he collects bribe to give people uh, for abstract contracts and all of that. That is the allegation. And that was, as far as I know, that was never, ever investigated by any agency or authority in Ghana. But bet your bottom dollar, bet your bottom dollar that people outside, agencies outside, would have followed up on that allegation. They don't work, sir. They're not going to say anything now. They're not going to say anything now. But like in, I had something, again, Wednesday, we might deal with that. Like the WikiLeaks, remember WikiLeaks some years ago made some revelations? That is how perhaps those things are going to come to light through some leakage or at, or when the authorities, when those foreign authorities decided this is time to bring it to the attention of the world. But you have serious allegations against the vice president that he taken bribe to give contract Chinese to Chinese people in particular. And I remind us that this is a situation where the vice president entertained his, his account to him, his um, tenant, Sue, into his living room with other people. He entertained Sue in his living room. Entertained Sue in his living room. So Sue had that type of access. I sure any and anybody can go and say they're going into the vice president. You can't get past the security to get in there, but Sue got in there. And then he did say Sue is his tenant, his words, and then he also said when a certain um, thing was put to him, he said, well, Sue deals with that part. I deal with the part in government. Now, if Sue's a private citizen, what part is Sue dealing with? Coming back to this 16.5 man, the allegation is made, and I say we want to hear what investigation is being done. CC, perhaps you can close with that. Oh, Paul, if, if they're not dealing with a, a little simple matter where a detective corporal from Borbis was charged sexual offenses months and months and months ago and to simply interdict him. Are they going to investigate money laundering by a very, allegations of money laundering by a very senior police officer? And then I ask the question, is the, is the extended squatter aware of these allegations? And if he's aware, has he done anything to, to trigger an investigation? And, and let me just backtrack a bit. Let me go back to this little girl because I, this is bothering me. And I say it's going to bother her significantly. Significant emotional effect. And then we look at that legally, Paul. I have the constitution before me. And under the heading, protection of freedom of expression. Article 146, and I'm quoting Oran section A. Article 146 say, except with his or her own consent, no person shall be hindered in the employment of his or her freedom of expression. That is to say, freedom to hold opinions without interference, freedom to receive ideas and information without inferences, freedom to communicate ideas and information without inferences interference sorry and freedom from interference with his or her correspondence and this doesn't only apply to male to to, to adults you know it applies to all of us adults and children and i hope and a plain to colin bino and others i think the other headmaster from 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 skellen or somewhere imran ali that they take good care of that girl. Counseling, coaching, mentoring, because psychologically it's going to affect her. Significant emotional effect. A little eight-year-old girl. Thank you very much, I'm your, my brother. I, I wish to compliment you on the um, quality of your um, of your audio. It, it, on video, it is much clearer. Um, a bigger part of your body is shown and so on. So um, congrats on that, CC. Well, you 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 are responsible for that, although it's not fully yet 
uh, what it ought to be, but it will continue to improve all the time. I'm, I'm getting there. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Yes, folks, we're trying to improve all along. We're trying to improve. As I told you, we got to even try to improve on the frequency. So, yeah, um, that is what it is. Um, we're almost two hours we into this program already, so I think we're going to close now. And um, we have lots of other things to tell you. We did not tell you about the, um, this controversial um, story about the, 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 the um, hotel or the piece of land at National Service and the NIS that is being suddenly given away to some Qatari investor. I think the sun was torn. We're going to address it perhaps on Wednesday. We're going to address it. Because remember, this program speaks about corruption and incompetence. So wherever we see incompetence, wherever we see corruption, we have an obligation to bring it to your attention and to speak about it. So um, we also have an, ex an ex-prisoner escape from Mazaruni. We're going to talk about that too. We are going to talk about that too. We got a Venezuelan issue. We haven't been able to um, go in. There's some significant developments um, in that matter. We're going to talk about that, um, God's willing, on Wednesday. So, folks, and let me say this. As we said, the, the, the one leg, we were always on three legs. We, we stream live on the Speaking Out Facebook page. Also, the um, YouTube Facebook page. And we cross-stream on CAMS. Uh, Facebook page. We were unable to cross stream on Scam's Facebook page um, this morning because, as I've said, he has some issues. They have taken over. The hackers have taken over his page and have, have locked him out of the page. So let people know that if you want to see it live now, you can know it is only streaming for the time being on um, Speaking Out Facebook page and Speaking Out um, YouTube page because people have been calling. All the time you're calling, what happened? not streaming on comms. That is the reason why it did not stream on comms today. Having said that, I don't think that it significantly affected the numbers because when I look at the numbers, I was pleasantly surprised at the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who were here. They came in a bit late. So I suspect that having not gotten on to the live out of uh, by via comms TV, they then got on to the actual speaking out page. So compliments to you uh, folks. And as I've said, God's willing, uh, God always, you know, because he's in charge. Next, well, we're going to be here Wednesday. That is the day after tomorrow, the um, 21st at 12 o'clock, Guyana time, 11 o'clock, New York, Eastern Standard Time. Until then, stay well. Stay well. I have to always implore you to stay well and see you then. Bye.